So, um, does everybody really have the right intention? We are saying that everyone has the right intention. What about people who um, commit heinous crimes, who are, um, say, murderers, terrorists? What about their intention? See, we made this you know, clear time and again that intention has to do with natural acceptance. And we can see that every human being has the same natural acceptance. Hence, right intention. So if we ask ourselves, do we want to be happy and make others happy? What is our natural acceptance? We want Ultimately, to make the other yeah. happy. Yeah. yeah. So we want to be happy and we want to make others happy. This is our natural acceptance. This is what is the choice from deep within. Mm -hmm. We might get angry you know, over somebody because he's misbehaving or he's eating me or something like that. But that point, I have a desire, you know, or I may have a desire to hurt him or you know, punish him. But if you ask yourself, what will be naturally acceptable to you? If you can correct him, you know, by developing right understanding in him, will you prefer for that? Or he will prefer for, you know, hurting him or causing unhappiness in him? Mm -hmm. So the natural acceptance, the natural choice is always to you know, be happy and make others happy. So for some reason, for some circumstances, you know, you may have that reaction. Isn't it? Yes, but if they really want uh, to make the other happy, then how can they do something so bad? Yeah, I'm coming to that making unhappy. You know. This other person's natural acceptance like me, is to be happy and make others happy. This is what we have to understand first. That is what we are saying. But when it comes to their competence, okay, their competence may be different from their intention. That is their desire, thought and expectation may be different. For example, one may have desire to fulfill others, while the other may have desire for exploiting the other. And that we see all around today, right? At that level, they could be correct people, corrupt, corrupt people. There can be thieves, right? Terrorists, all that. Okay. Mm. So at the level of their desire, there may be problem. And, but that desire is part of the competence, not the intention. Intention is something which is coming from that natural acceptance. If you look at this diagram, you know, which we have been saying right from the beginning, mm. that this natural acceptance is in that one and two. Right? Computer has to do with this three, four and five. Mm. This desire, which is the part of competence, may be guided by preconditioning or sensation or natural acceptance. When this desire is guided by natural acceptance, then we can be sure that yes, we have this competence in line with our intention. But if it is guided by preconditioning or sensation, there is no surety. The desire may be guided by natural acceptance or may not be guided by natural acceptance. It may be in accordance with your natural acceptance, with your intention, or it may be otherwise. <coughs> so this is what I really want to be, you know, that natural acceptance, that intention. But this is what I am, this competence. And that we have discussed, you know, this blog, this circle, if you see, right, only this yellow part of our desire is governed by natural acceptance. The red part is governed by sensation, by preconditioning, and the black part is governed by the sens sensation. Mm. And that's how most of our competence is not matching with our natural acceptance with our intention. So the problem is with the competence. Right. 
and what we are saying is that when we are making a program with someone then we have to evaluate my own competence the competence of the other and make the program accordingly so we are not saying that just make the program on the basis of trust on intention no what we are saying is that we have this trust on intention of everybody therefore we have an acceptance for relationship you know with everybody with that feeling of relationship now we are evaluating the competence our own competence and the competence of the other and on the basis of that we are making the program right mm -hmm. so if there is a thief i will accept him as a human being i will have trust on intention of the thief right but when i am evaluating the competence i can see that as at present he has desires out of his preconditioning or sensation okay which is you know causing him this act of thief you know stealing so i have to evaluate this competence and on the basis of that competence i have to take the decision i have to make a program so there can be issue of competence for myself and issue of competence for the other and i will decide accordingly so i keep quoting this example you know in china this is an example from china that one of the uh, judge who happened to be the follower of this person called lao tzu he became the judge and there was a case which came to him for judgment and the case was that one thief had stolen something from the house of a rich person the richest person in the town and when this case was being discussed and he listened to the whole thing and he said that okay now i understand and now i can give judgment so he gave the judgment and the judgment was that this thief was you know <coughs> given a punishment for 6 months behind the bar and this rich man was given one year of punishment behind the bar so he was quite surprised you know this rich man he said what is this justice this person has stolen from my district he is given 6 months of punishment i am giving one year given one year of punishment how can that be and this judge explained that see this he has done a you know, wrong act and therefore we are giving him six months punishment but you are doing act which is worse than this you have accumulated so much from the society by exploitation right and you have created so much of difference that you are creating such thieves so this is worse than what thief is doing so this is the evaluation of the competence of the thief and the competence of this rich man who has accumulated so much by exploitation this we have to understand this we have to understand that we have to evaluate our competence and evaluate his competence and on the basis of that we have to decide so when i am evaluating my competence and his competence and if i find that i have unnecessarily accumulated so much then my program will be to do something with that also not only punishing the thief mm. so i may you know decide to punish the thief but then i have to do something about my competence also right do i continue exploiting people and accumulating more and more and most of the time which is not necessary so we are very uh, strict about this thief 
but we are not very strict about ourselves whether we are exploiting others or we are you know uh, really uh, trying to fulfill others when we say um, you know that trust everyone so we sometimes we people there are people we have never met the somebody that i don't know at all so isn't that like blindly trusting everyone see what we are saying is not that you know you blindly trust everyone what we are saying is that let us understand let us understand ourselves let us understand the other human being and then let us understand the relationship between the two and when you go about doing this these are two issues the trust on intention and trust of com on competence and i'm saying that if we study properly the human being ourselves and the other we'll find that everybody wants to be happy and make others happy with that we will have trust on intention of everybody whether we have met him or we have not met him then with this trust on intention whenever i have to interact with the other person i have to make a program with the other person i will certainly evaluate my competence and evaluate the competence of the other so i'm not saying we are not saying that you jump into you know interaction with the other without evaluating your competence and without evaluating your the competence of the other i mean suppose you want you know english and the other person does not know english now you can't jump you know and start talking to the other person in english and then later complain that you know he is not understanding my you know what i am saying he will not because he does not have the competence or in other words he understands hindi and you do not know how to speak hindi so you do not have the competence so what we are saying very clearly is that have trust on intention of everybody but therefore we are not saying that you make the program on the basis of this trust on intention only on the basis of trust on intention you will at least see him as related to you not in opposition to you when you see him in relation with you then you will start thinking about the program with that feeling of relationship but when you are making the program you will certainly evaluate your competence and competence of the other that is what we are saying what we are doing today otherwise you know is that we are creating mistrust in the minds of the people by different acts by different acts i keep quoting this example that when you are traveling in the train right, there is this announcement that be aware okay. these people sitting next to you can be a cheat right. don't trust him don't trust him don't share your food don't eat his food it can have poison now what are we doing what are we doing and it is it based on fact so on an average 2 crores people are traveling every day in indian railway how many people are getting cheated i mean if you look at your relatives for example or your friends how many of them have got cheated by now Hmm. Nobody. Now this is I, important. Eh? No one that I know. Yeah, or maybe one or two. But the important is out of two crores traveling every day, right? And with sixty years of your experience, or fifty-five years of years of your friendship and all that, with how many people have traveled and how many cases? But what you are doing, you are creating this mistrust. 
and now everybody around you seems to be a thief, you know, and you have to be careful of him. Mm. Now, this is the problem. A feeling is created that everybody in Pakistan is against India, right? And everybody in India is against Pakistan, which is not true. <laughs> so we are saying that we must have this trust on intention based on our understanding of human being. Right? Understanding the relationship between human being. But when it comes to making a program with the other, we will evaluate the mutual competence and decide on the basis of this mutual competence. So it is not a matter of trusting the other you know, blindly. It is making the program on the basis of proper evaluation of the competence of oneself and of the other. This is what we are saying. In fact, what we are doing today is we are doubting the intention of the other blindly. <laughs> what about people that I do know but they are making the same mistake again and again. I have repeatedly told them, then again they are making the same mistake. Then will I still say that their intention is right? What we will say is that there is problem with their competence. That is what we are saying. And this we can verify for our own case. We have right intention, but we keep making many mistakes again and again. Therefore, I have to improve my competence and the other person also has to improve his competence. But as far as intention is concerned, my intention is good. And the intention of the other is also good. Ultimately, the deep desire is to be happy and make others happy. So this is what we are saying. And this is very interesting, you know, if I have this clarity that yes, ultimately I want to be happy and make others happy, therefore my intention is good and your intention is also good, then I can feel related to you. And with that relationship, I will think in terms of how to improve, how to improve myself, how to improve you. Right? If I do not have this trust on intention, I end up getting irritated, getting angry, having feeling of opposition. So the whole thing breaks down. I mean, this is happening with our own family members, with our children, right, with our spouse. That instead of accepting that the intention of the other is good, and therefore feeling related unconditionally, and therefore working for the development of mutual competence, rather than getting irritated, angry, or having feeling of opposition. If I am not doing this, I am stuck. There is so much of complaint going on, so much of fight. It might even lead to break up of relationship. So, <laughs> if the person is making same mistake again and again, this only indicates this lack of competence on his part. And I must do something to improve upon it. Instead, if I start doubting his intention and, you know, because of this making mistakes again and again, what do I do? I get irritated. I get angry. Right? I react. Right? I have a feeling of opposition for him. Well, does this solve the problem? Mm, no. So both of us have to improve our competence. And we can always begin with ourselves and help the other also in the process. Because I, if I improve and if I behave properly with the other, right, then this will create a space in the other. 
On the other hand, if I misbehave out of irritation, out of anger, right? Then with all my good intention, what I am doing is hurting the other. And this only creates reaction in the other rather than acceptance in the other. So the solution otherwise that you have is not working anyway. But you may continue to try with that for some more time. But don't you think that if I keep trying like this and if I keep trusting the other's intention and uh, keep accepting whatever they are doing, then they'll start taking advantage of me? Yes, that is possible. That is possible, right? <clears throat> but what we are saying is that this idea of giving punishment and you know getting irritated, getting angry, you know, having feeling of opposition, and then with that feeling of opposition, giving punishment, all this is it working? That is one question. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have now increasing number of jails, right? And increasing number of prisoners and all that. So are we able to solve the problem this way? That is one thing. Second thing is that we are not saying that, you know, you keep accepting their misbehavior or their injustice. We are not saying that. What we are saying is that, what is the feeling that we have? Do we have a feeling of trust, trust on intention? with the other, or I have a feeling of opposition with the other. This is what we are saying. Right? When we have this feeling of trust or intention, then we will feel related, we will feel responsible to the other person. And with that sense of responsibility, I will interact. Right? When I interact with that sense of responsibility of, you know, in relationship, first acceptance of relationship and then with this feeling of relationship, you know, when I'm behaving with him or I'm interacting with him with that sense of responsibility, then I will certainly be able to think much better than what I'm thinking now with the feeling of opposition. When I'm interacting with him with this feeling of relationship, this feeling of affection, then it might be, you know, that at some point of time, I am very tough on him. Right? Mm. Right? I can be very tough on him to draw his attention towards the mistake that he is making. Right? Mm. But when I am doing this, I have a feeling of affection for him. That is important. And if I have this feeling of affection for him, it gets communicated to the other. And that is what creates the space for a dialogue. When that space is created for the dialogue, then we can really share with the other about how he can improve upon himself. What is the problem with his competence and how he can improve upon that. But before that dialogue is started, Right? We want to punish him. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is that you may have this, you know, feeling of affection, that feeling of trust and then feeling of affection. And with that feeling of affection, sometimes you have to be very tough. So this example we keep taking, you know, that if the mother sees that the child is putting his hand in the fire, right? He will get burned. Then you hold the hand by force. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is not opposition. Mm. This is holding the hand of the child from getting burned, right? In the fire with a feeling of affection. But you are holding it by force. So that may be necessary, right? outside, but inside what is your feeling? That is important. Feeling of trust or mistrust? Mm -hmm. Feeling of affection or feeling of jealousy? 
So this businessman that we were talking about, right? If this businessman has a feeling of affection for others, then they will think of nurturing others or exploiting others. If he has the right feeling, he will think of nurturing. Yes. But today what is happening? Are we all the rich people, you know, who have been accumulating more and more rich, more and more wealth. Do they have this feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? And if they have this feeling of relationship, they will think of nurturing others or exploiting others. So we have to ask all these fundamental questions, you know. Because we are not able to ask this fundamental question and answer this them, you know. We are continuing to be in trouble. But um, when we say, you know, trust everyone, I have this doubt that I might get cheated. So maybe I should uh, uh, not trust right away, maybe, you know, uh, get to know the person a little bit. So the question is, uh, how long should we observe someone before really trusting them? Yeah. Uh, my simple answer will be till you feel confident that, confident that you are able to evaluate his competence properly. And of course, your own competence as well. <laughs> till then wait. But at least do not have that trust on, you know, mistrust. Do not have the doubt or intention to begin with. Mm -hmm. That is creating problem. So I will have trust on intention, but I will not try to interact till I am able to evaluate my competence and competence of the other person. That would be better. Rather than start interacting with the feeling of doubt. That is creating more problem. Now, supposing um, we trust someone and now they break the trust. So we are saying we must trust uh, continuously, unconditionally. But now if they break broken the trust, how can we keep trusting them continuously? How to manage that? See, what we are saying time and again is that we have to have trust on intention unconditionally, continuously, because that is born out of our understanding of natural acceptance. Then we are saying when it comes to making a program, we have to evaluate the competence, our own competence and competence of the other. And if we have made this program and it is not working, okay, then it means that we have not done the proper evaluation of our own competence. So somebody breaks the trust means what? It only means that you evaluated some competence, right? Or the other, and he does not have that competence. So I have to evaluate him. Again, so I have to have now better evaluation of this, his competence. That is what I have to do. So if I find that, you know, one person is so uh, kind of uh, lazy okay, and he cannot get up before nine o'clock. And if I ask him that, okay, tomorrow morning you get up four o'clock and he'll say, yes, yes, I will get up. And next morning he's not able to get up. Now what do we do? We start doubting, right? <laughs> but this was because we did not evaluate the competence of the other. And or because we did not make a program with him, okay, which can improve upon his competence. So for example, take this, you know, many of the participants of this morning session, you know, they have been saying in their sharing that you know, they were finding it very difficult to get up early in the morning. Right? 
and then with lot of effort they uh, you know decided to get up and listen and when they were listening they found it so meaningful you know, so useful for themselves that now they are able to get up you know quite in time you know, by 5 o'clock they are up, up now this is a program which is helping them to improve their competence so the same people who were not able to get up in the morning now are able to get up in the morning so we did not doubt the intention of the other and we did not keep waiting also for them to appear and then we will start but we started talking something meaningful and it made sense to them and because the self found that it is making sense right it is able to you know kind of uh, improve upon the lifestyle it is able to instruct the body that it is time to get up you know. and when the self is instructing the body it is able to get up so this is what we are saying that we don't have to just keep trusting them you know we have to find out that as far as trust and intention is concerned yes everybody has the right intention when it comes to making a program with the others we will evaluate our competence and competence of the others and on the basis of that we'll make the program and if that program does not work out it only means that our evaluation of competence is not proper either i am not able able to evaluate my competence properly or i am not able to evaluate the competence of the other properly right and therefore we have to improve upon the competence of you know work for improving upon the competence of both of us but before that at least we have to have the right evaluation of our competence and if it is not there let us work on that i remember when uh, we started this you know ehb workshop back in you know 2000 around that we said okay you can ask any question you know even in between so when the discussion is started okay and if you have anything very important you think you know doubt they can then you can ask and we'll respond to it now when we started there is a lot of doubt saying that you know there are people who will not let you speak you know they will have so many questions and they will keep disturbing you know. and it did happen first two days three days you know four days in the first few workshops 2009 i remember uh, when we had this first workshop for up technical university teachers first four days they were most of the time complaining that how can you teach such course you know when we are teaching in a private college where the owner is out to exploit the children, you know students it took four days you know they were just asking one question from this side and another question from that side you know but then by fourth day you know most of them started thinking that it is something which is making sense to them and it will be useful for their family right so they started saying that okay fine whether we teach it in the class in the college or not but it is something which is useful for myself and for the family and i will work there so fine right mm-hmm. and then slowly you know the message has gone around and now from the first day the first session you know people are seriously working on it right and we have kept the mode same that we are allowing everybody to ask you know, any question that they have even you know when the proposals are being presented mm. and people are quite organized but true this also you know calls for a competence on the part of the resource person you know, to be able to 
give a satisfactory and meaningful answer from where the other person can find a clue and work on himself. Right. So we are not saying you go on trusting them continuously in terms of their competence and making program with them. I'm saying you have to have trust or intention and with that you work out the program based on your competence, based on competence of the other. And in fact, one of the criterion for evaluation of a resource person we have kept is that, is he able to establish this dialogue? Or he just, you know, giving a monologue. So unless we can establish this dialogue, this process of self-exploration does not start in the other. And it has to do with the competence of the resource person, not with you know, the competence of the uh, participant. <laughs> so if the resource person has the competence, this is what a teacher is expected to have, then he will be able to initiate the dialogue. Okay. He will be able to facilitate the dialogue. And if it is going out of the, you know, direction, then he will be able to monitor it. That competence he has to have. Instead of doing this, if we start saying that, okay, no dialogue, okay. whatever is true, I am telling and you just listen. This is what we do in the most of the time, teachers. Then the dialogue will not be there, then the self-exploration will not start most of the time. Yeah. Dr. Prakash has written that understanding of a person is on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. Trust Some keeps sense. changing based on situation. Yeah, this is what we are saying. Trust on intention or trust on competence. So my response would be that trust on intention will be there continuously. Trust on competence will depend upon the competence of my own self and the competence of the other. This is what we are saying. But unfortunate thing is that we equate the two. The doubt on intention, we start equating to doubt on Doubt of, I mean, doubt on competence, we equate as doubt on intention. That is the problem. Okay. So, for example, I have never met Dr. Prakash. Right? Now, what is my choice? I start with a doubt on intention of Dr. Prakash or I start with a trust on intention of Dr. Prakash. Uh, For me, the choice is very clear. I start with a trust on intention of Dr. Prakash. That he is asking a question because he wants to understand something. And therefore, I will respond with that trust on intention. And when I am responding, I have certain evaluation about myself, my own competence. I have certain evaluation about the competence of Dr. Prakash. And with that, I am responding. For example, I have this evaluation of the competence of Dr. Prakash that he can understand English. And I have this competence that I can speak in English. So I am just using this language, English, because I have this evaluation of my competence and his competence. But suppose he does not know English, right? Then my program will fail. But that does not mean, you know, that I start doubting the intention of Dr. Prakash. It only means that I thought that Dr. Prakash can understand Hindi, but English, but he cannot. He can rather understand Hindi. So in that case, I will make this you know, choice to talk to him in Hindi if I also know Hindi.
But I always have this feeling of trust on intentional Dr. Prakash. Yeah, similarly, Kavita Pandey Mishra ji is asking, <clears throat> Sir, in an organization, conflicts are bound to happen. It may be related with ideas, personal beliefs, and understanding towards each other. Uh, are you saying that <clears throat> it is based on mutual competence? Does it mean, as you are saying that you are, uh, as you are saying that it is based on mutual competence, does it mean that it is to continuous process? It is a continuous process. That is evaluation. Is it a continuous process? Yes, so let me ask. And she's saying that I believe clear. trusting someone is never a permanent feeling. No, I. That, what is the last sentence? I believe trusting someone is never a permanent feeling. Yeah. So uh, let's take this, you know, too many questions are there, there in, together. So let me put them separately and then respond. So this is one statement saying that these conflicts are bound to be there in the organization. Right. I would say that this sentence will be true if you presume that there cannot be the feeling of relationship in an organization. An organization cannot work as a family with right feelings for each other. That is my first response. Today, yes. Today we have this system of management by opposition, right? <laughs> Not by relationship. Therefore, there is so much of conflict, so much of opposition. Right? If we have this management by relationship, then things would change. Right. When we have relationship and we are working with feeling of relationship with each other, then still there may be difference of opinion. I may think of doing something in one way, the other person may think doing it some other way, but that is fine. Right. If there is feeling of relationship, we'll be able to work out this opinions, you know, difference in opinions. But the whole thing is based on opposition. The whole management today is based on opposition. So that is creating problem. So we have to start with this feeling of relationship. Have this feeling of relationship with all the members of the organization. And then with that feeling, of relationship, we have to work out how the organization will run. How the organization will run. Today, the purpose of organization is not ensuring happiness and prosperity for one and for all, at least for the members of the organization. But the purpose is more to do with profit maximization. Profit maximization of the owner of the organization, of the industry, for example. Yeah, today's system today's system is based on mistrust. I mean, that should be very clear. This exam supervisor, university representative, flying squad, etc. They are there because our whole system is not necessarily based on trust. Even inside the family. So that is uh, what Dr. Arunachalam has written that. system is to be evaluated by audit only is it correct so these kind of questions are coming up yeah this this is important you know this uh, words for example auditing now auditing does what does it mean do i take stock of things yes we do take stock of things but with what feeling that is important 
we do take stock of things we do you know go for auditing but when you are auditing something you know some organization are you doing it with the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition and if we are doing it with a feeling of relationship we will be able to do a better audit and it will be you know a source of happiness for both i mean just take this example of morning session right morning 5:30 to 7:30 we are interacting okay. not giving any award not giving any punishment so no reward no punishment and not that we are pleasing pleasing everybody you know no we are talking about the you know the natural basis for evaluation for our self evaluation for our self development right and people are working on it people are working on it without any return that we call as today as return you know Yes, and very senior people are able to look into themselves, evaluate themselves, and express that yes, this has been the problem, and this is you know I have been able to find the solution, and I am better every day. That means this is also an organization, and such thing can really happen. <laughs>